Hello, Grand Rapids. This is City Manager Mark Washington, and I am outside of the Grand Rapids Police Department headquarters with our new chief, Eric Winstrom. Welcome, chief. Thank you. We're so excited to have you here in our community uh, after your swearing in on March the 7th, which was well attended, supported by our community. I know that you are in transition, and uh, how's the first 10 days been so far? Fantastic. It's been uh, a great experience. Uh, I've got to meet almost the entire police department. Um, been to 12 lineups here, uh, meet the officers as they uh, start their days, and just to hear from them, to hear from the leadership team, uh, it's just been incredible and a positive experience. Now your, your orientation to our community is not only internal to the department, but you've also had conversations outside of the police department with community members. You want to talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, from uh, walking around in the neighborhoods as I hit the streets with the police officers to um, the public that I've met at the commission meetings who are uh, very vocal and uh, want to just express to me what uh, they see um, ahead as needed from the police department. And then um, I was fortunate enough to trail along with our homeless outreach team and to get along in the downtown area here and meet with the homeless service agencies to talk to them in uh, the ACLU, the NAACP. I'm just uh, trying to get uh, input from as, as many organizations, uh, neighborhood organizations as I can in, uh, in a quick, quick, quick time frame. Well, Chief Payne started a lot of the conversation about neighborhood policing um, and, and making sure that we're engaged and trusted. And I, I do want to thank him for his over 30 years of service. but. He leaves the department in a good place for you to pick up and, and tell us a little bit about your philosophy around community and neighborhood policing. Absolutely, and I see the foundation that Chief Payne laid is really going to set us up for success moving forward. And my overall philosophy in policing is just to make sure that the officers are doing what most uh, benefits the community that they're serving. So whether that's um, you know, possibly taking enforcement action or whether their time is better served following up on uh, crime issues or following up with business owners or uh, you know, looking for other ways that they can benefit the community. So it's really how the officers are spending their time and making sure that they're spending it in a way that's embraced by the community as well. And there's been a lot of discussions uh, nationally around um, doing policing differently and uh, making sure that uh, there are members of the community that can participate and partner with it. We, here we, we've started conversation with neighborhood organizations, Cure Violence. What's your vision in terms of partnering with community to make sure that there's crime prevention and crime reduction? Absolutely. And I was invited yesterday uh, to the uh, SAFE Task Force meeting with the two of the city commissioners who organized it. And it was a, a group of uh, neighborhood organizations that come together that can uh, uh, get together to talk with the police and with uh, other city agencies to say what they can do to make a positive impact on gun violence. So uh, as well as Cure Violence, I've reached out to Stephen Jackson, the director there, to say, you know, how can we be a partner in the most impactful way? So it really is, you know, the, the police department is a vital role in public safety, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. Absolutely. Well, I know you have some, uh, we have some uh, big challenges ahead in terms of um, the budget will be adopted soon for the city as well as the police department as well as we're in the midst of having some very important labor discussions that uh, both began prior to your arrival but looking forward to your leadership and helping us successfully uh, conclude both processes. I'm looking forward to it too. Yep. Well Chief, is there anything else you'd like to share with, with our listening and watching audience before we conclude? Just thank you uh, for the warm welcome that I've, seen so, that I've received so far from Grand Rapids. It's been fantastic. All right. Thank, thanks you for being on the, on the show with us. Thank you, sir. Yeah. During the most recent city commission meeting, the city commission acknowledged Bobby Butler for her many years of service. This is very important because as part of Women's History Month, we have a history maker in our community. Ms. Butler has served over 45 years on the Housing Commission as a commissioner. She is the longest serving housing commissioner in the city of Grand Rapids. 45 years is quite a stint of service and we want to thank her for her service. She also was previously uh, served as the first department head in the city of Grand Rapids that helped us develop an affirmative action plan uh, she developed the MWB program for the city, contract compliance program for the, for the city, as well as sexual harassment policy. 
In addition to acknowledging Ms. Butler, the Housing Commission also provided an update on the 4,200 units of housing uh, that they support to making sure that they're affordable to low-income people in our, unit, uh, in our community. We also received a briefing from our staff on possible amendments to our zoning ordinance that would allow us to create more housing supply by using side lots that are already existing and owned by homeowners as part of our infill housing development strategy. Uh, as many of you may be aware of, in terms of most recent housing study, we identified the need to have 9,000 additional units in the city created by 2025. We also approved a public hearing for the April 12th uh, that would allow the public to comment on our consolidated housing and community development annual action plan, which talks about all of our areas of homeowner affordability, all the way from emergency shelter, rapid rehousing, up to affordable housing here in Grand Rapids. The City Commission also scheduled a public hearing for a Brownfield plan amendment for the property located on 120 Ottawa. Uh, this would allow a 16-story residential building to be constructed above the existing Studio Park parking ramp. This will help address the need for additional housing supply in the downtown area. So lots of effort uh, going on to help address our housing supply here in Grand Rapids, both at the affordable level as well as market rate level. But this is also the month in which uh, St. Patrick's Day is celebrating additional women's history. So I want to wish everyone a happy St. Patrick's Day. Make sure that you stay safe and we'll see you next month.